Do amniotic stem cell therapy injections work for the treatment of arthritis or tendonitis? We know platelet-rich plasma injections work extremely well for the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. We also know bone marrow stem cells and adipose-derived stem cells can be beneficial. But what about amniotic stem cells? Let's look at what clinical trials have to say. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. Now, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, my goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Orthobiologic treatments are often called regenerative medicine and amniotic stem cell injections are one type of treatment that fall under this category. But what are they and do they really work? The thought process behind using amniotic fluid is that in theory, it contains a significant amount of growth factors and stem cells, which may be used to treat painful conditions. The amniotic fluid contains mesenchymal stem cells, which can then be transferred to an area that is injured to help stimulate healing and grow new tissue. This is especially enticing because we know stem cell counts decrease with age. This is unfortunate because the older population is the exact population which may benefit most from orthobiologic therapy. So if we have access to another source of high stem cell count, then we can use that to treat a number of different conditions, and that's the hope behind using amniotic stem cell injections. But that's in theory. Let's see what we currently have in practice. This study was published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine in 2019, and it looked to quantify how many stem cells are present in available amniotic fluid preparations currently on the market. The authors invited seven different companies to participate in the study, and only three agreed to participate. This is already a big red flag and not a good sign. Presumably, all the companies would agree to participate if they believed in their product. Nevertheless, the authors proceeded with analyzing products from these three different companies. Their goal was to determine the amount of mesenchymal stem cells in each product and quantify the presence of various growth factors relevant to orthopedics. And what they did was they compared the samples to unprocessed amniotic fluid as well as bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells from healthy adults. All the groups had the same culture medium, they had the same expansion techniques, same testing, and analysis procedures. The authors found that mesenchymal stem cells could not be identified in the commercial amniotic fluid products or the unprocessed amniotic fluid. There were cells identified in two of the products, but the majority of these cells were actually dead, and the few cells that were alive did not exhibit any characteristics of normal mesenchymal stem cells. However, they did note that there were significant amounts of growth factors in all the products. The researchers concluded that amniotic fluid products should not be considered stem cell therapies, and researchers should use caution when evaluating commercial claims that products contain stem cells. But given their growth factor content, right, Amniotic fluid products may still represent a promising tool for orthopedic treatment. What this means is that the current available amniotic stem cell therapy products do not actually have any live stem cells. However, they do contain an incredible amount of growth factors. This is very much like doing platelet-rich plasma injections. We know PRP contains platelets and growth factors, which can initiate an incredible cascade of controlling pain and inflammation. So even though amniotic fluid products do not contain live stem cells, they may still work because of the growth factors that are in them. So what do clinical trials show? This study was a randomized control trial published in the Journal of Arthroscopy in 2021. They wanted to assess the safety and efficacy of amniotic fluid products compared to hyaluronic acid and to placebo for the treatment of knee arthritis. The authors found that the group that got amniotic fluid products had significant improvements in pain and functional scores at three months, six months, and 12 months post-injection when compared to both placebo and hyaluronic acid. They concluded, that amniotic fluid injections demonstrated clinically meaningful improved outcomes over the controls out to 12 months post-injection. They also state that there were no concerning adverse reactions to the amniotic fluid injections. This is especially important because amniotic fluid products are foreign to the body. The beauty of orthobiologic therapy is that with PRP and with stem cell injections, we are using your own body. We're using your own cells to help treat an injured location. 
But with amniotic fluid products, this does not hold true. What we are injecting is foreign to the body. So it is especially important to assess safety and severe adverse reaction. Good to see that there were none in the group that got the amniotic fluid injection. And are there any other studies that we can look at to learn more? Well, the downside is no. There is a significant lack of clinical trial data to support or refute the use of amniotic fluid products. So what is my takeaway? First, technically we shouldn't even call them stem cell injections because they don't contain any stem cells. But it does seem that the growth factors in the amniotic fluid products may provide significant improvements to pain and function in those suffering from knee arthritis. With that said, we don't actually know. There's just not enough evidence. The question also remains, how does amniotic fluid therapy compare to platelet-rich plasma? We have multiple randomized controlled trials as well as systematic reviews and meta-analysis reporting the beneficial effects of platelet-rich plasma. Moreover, the benefit of PRP is that it is extremely safe. It's from your own body, your own cells, your own growth factors. And we can't say the same of amniotic fluid products. There is risk for adverse effects. So until more studies are done, PRP is likely the preferable option. Now with that said, there is one clinical scenario where it might make sense to try amniotic fluid therapy if future studies support their use. People who are on antiplatelet agents such as aspirin or Plavix for the treatment of cardiovascular disease cannot get PRP injections because these medications will negate the effects of their platelets. And in these scenarios, amniotic fluid products may actually be a better option because they contain a significant amount of growth factors that in theory won't be affected by these antiplatelet agents. But until then, until more trials are done, we just don't know. And if you're interested in learning more about orthobiologics, platelet-rich plasma, or stem cells, check out this playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.